welcome. My name is Margaret O'Neill. I'm a historical costumer and textile conservator in training. Today I'm excited to introduce you to my first sewing project of 2021, the Madame de Pompadour gown from her Boucher portrait from 1756. I was able to see this portrait in Munich in February of 2020, right before COVID hit, and I just fell in love with it all over again. I'm a big fan of 18th century French art, and this dress is one of the most iconic dresses out there in terms of the mid 18th century. This dress is a favorite in the historical costuming community. It's very, very iconic and it's been done by many different people. Most recently, So Steen put out a series of her recreating this dress, which I will link down below, as well as American Duchess's sort of analyzing of the portrait video. I will be using the portrait as my main source of inspiration for this project as well as one of the preparatory sketches for the portrait. For the gown, I also intend to focus on historical practice techniques. As many as I can reasonably accomplish, I am on a budget and I also am on a limited time frame, being that I am in grad school at the moment. This means that I will be 100% hand sewing the gown, as well as using hand pinking irons to do all of the decorative trim. I also hand sewed all of the undergarments on this project, which you will see in a moment, and we'll be using the 18th century construction method for the gown. As I just mentioned, today's video will focus on constructing the pocket hoops, the primary skirt support for this gown, as well as a tour of the stays that I made. I didn't film the stays because that was before I was sort of filming for YouTube, but I do want to give you sort of a background about how I was able to construct these in an original practice way by giving you a tour of the garment. But first, I wanted to give you a little background on Madame de Pompadour and this portrait by Boucher. Madame de Pompadour was born on December 29th, 1721 to a middle-class family in Paris. She was given the best education as a fortune teller had told her mother when she was young that she would be the mistress of the king. She did end up marrying a man named Charles who she pledged to never leave except for the king. She ran a notable salons throughout Paris and was known for her wit and intelligence. She even hosted Voltaire. And through this sort of high society gatherings, she caught the attention of the king. Although she was trying to. After King Louis XV's mistress died in 1744, he became infatuated with Madame de Pompadour and proclaimed his love for her at a masked ball in 1745 when he was dressed as a yew tree and she was dressed as the Huntress Diana. Very romantic. She remained chief mistress from the king from 1745 until 1751 as she was in quite ill health and a sexual relationship was not necessarily something that she could have at the time. But even though their sexual relationship had sort of dismantled, she was still the king's most trusted advisor and friend, and became an important fixture at court until her death. She had a large impact on the artistic and architectural aesthetic of 18th century France, and she patronized many, many artists, including Boucher. She was even an artist herself, doing many engravings throughout her lifetime. She was also the king's most trusted confidant and helped to make important political decisions. Madame de Pompadour died in 1764 at the age of 42 from tuberculosis. She was mourned extensively by the court and, of course, her beloved Louis XV. She is the pinnacle of the 18th century woman, smart, intelligent, artistic, and driven. And above all, her dress is fabulous which is why I wanted to recreate this dress specifically. I have a connection to the painting, I love the person who's wearing it, and it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous gown. So stay tuned for my process of making the underpinnings of this dress. As I said previously, I started out with the stays. I did not film the process of making these as I had not started my channel at the time, but do want to show you the inner workings of them. These were completely hand constructed using a pattern from Jill Solon's book, corsets, historical patterns, and techniques. They are made from two layers of natural linen canvas and a layer of this beautiful silk jacquard. They are fully boned with synthetic baleen and sewn with linen thread. The hand done eyelets are done in silk buttonhole thread and silk ribbon is used to bind the edges. As you can see, I started out with this sort of buttonhole stitch, but just ended up doing whip stitches instead. It's much, fast, much faster, much easier, and just looks a lot better in my opinion. The stays are a tad big for me as I change sizes during a four month long construction process, but they are still the correct shape for this project, so I am deciding to keep them. 
I also spent a very long time on them, so I would, I would like to use them. Pocket hoops are a type of pannier, which is the French word meaning basket, that have a bottom and a side panel so they can act as large pockets. They're very nifty. You can store a lot of things in them. Peignets were used as a primary skirt support in the middle of the 18th century, and I believe that Madame de Pompadour, being an active figure and an admirer of practicality, probably used the pocket version. You can also see in the portrait that she is sitting very comfortably, which leads me to believe that she is not wearing a grand peignet. Also, I want pocket hoops. I don't really want a grand peignet. My pocket hoops were made from that same natural linen canvas that I used for my stays. I started by enlarging the side hoop pattern from Nora Watt's corset and crinolines and made a quick mock-up. Okay, so I've cut out all my pieces and I did a mock-up. This is the pattern from Nora Waugh. So I've made one main adjustment to this Nora Waugh pattern and this is the side piece right here. I've just made it so it's the length of sort of the hoop piece. And so I have full coverage in terms of my pockets and also it'll probably be a bit more structurally sound that way. Um, you can see in Janet Arnold, Patterns of Fashion 5. You can see in the accent garment here, it does have that shape. So I just estimated sort of where I wanted to sit on my hips and then extended it the full, the full way of that hoop section. So pretty easy alteration, didn't do anything else. I'm probably gonna add like these hip pads as well. And I don't know if I'm gonna add an extra bone across the top, but I don't, I don't know. I don't think I will, but that is an option that I'm looking at right now. I had two side panels, two bottom panels, and two boning panels, one for each hoop. Then I thread marked all the pieces to make sure everything would line up correctly. Next, I sewed the boning channels into the main pieces. I used a three quarter inch linen tape for this and secured it with a heavy natural linen thread. I used simple running stitches since the thread was a bit too heavy for back stitches and this seems to be sufficient enough. Then I cut and tipped the boning with a bit of electrical tape. I used spring steel boning as it is readily available and easy to order online. And I didn't have anything else. I ordered um, sort of the caps for the boning, but they were much too big. So I had electrical tape on hand and I decided to use it of course to make sure that the tips of the bone don't rip through the hoops at any point because that would be annoying. Then I inserted the boning into the channels. At this point I cut and hemmed the pocket slit as well. I did mess up on one of them. I was originally going to put the boning channels on the inside and then have like a smooth outside but I just messed up when I started sewing and I didn't want to take it out. So one of the pocket slits is the wrong way around. You can see the hemming but I really don't care because you're not going to see it in the final product and it's really not that big of a deal. I then lined up the side panel and stitched one side into place with back stitches and then stretched it over to the other side and back stitched that seam as well. I then pinned the bottom onto the panel and stitched around that. Then I fell down all the seams by trimming one side of the seam allowance and felling it to the interior with whip stitches. Next, I turned everything right side out, placed the hoops on the mannequin, and gather the front panels down to the side panel, making sure that the pocket slit was in the center. I then whipped these together to hold everything in place. I like doing this before binding, just using a heavy linen, linen thread to whip everything together really gives me that peace of mind that my binding isn't just gonna come undone. I then pinned both of the hoops to my stays in a little fitting to see how long the tape should be in back. I then pinned the tape in place, whipped one side down to the hoop, then folded the tape over and whipped the other side down to the hoop. Then I added ties on both of the bottom bones, a step which I probably should have done during seaming the hoops together, but this is totally fine. This works. And they're done! This project was relatively easy and quick. Um, next to the stays, they were like lightning fast. Uh, the hoops have a great shape and I can have so many exciting mid 18th century garments now. Yay! So that is the first part of constructing this project. I will be making a linen petticoat off screen as it will be the same construction to the silk petticoat that is going over it. And let's be real, the silk petticoat is gonna be much, much more interesting than that linen, linen petticoat. The next video, hopefully I will be constructing the petticoat and the robe. I will probably be trimming the petticoat as well 
I don't know when this video is going to come out. It just depends on my work schedule and my filming schedule. Unfortunately, I film with natural light, which means that I can't really film after four o'clock right now. So hopefully that will change as the days get longer. It also just depends on my school schedule and kind of what's going on there. But hopefully over spring break, I will have a lot of progress on this. However, if you do want to be informed when those videos come out, please subscribe to the channel. That would make my day. It would be lovely. Also, if you like this video, please make sure to like it. If you would like to follow along with the process of this project, uh, you can see some of it over on Instagram, at Costume and Conservation. And if you're interested in more of my study collection, I'm doing quick study collection tours of my antique garments over on TikTok. That's at Costume and Conservation on TikTok as well. It's a very exciting place over there. There's a lot of exciting things happening on my TikTok. In the meantime, between these costume videos, I will also be putting up videos about historical dress and also some conservation tips. So follow along for that as well. Links for everything will be down below. Make sure to check out the description box. I hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day.